Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. That being said, I want to I want to bridge that gap back to you, brother, and then let you go back on your, on, you know, so when we were talking about, yes, obviously any trainer worth their salt knows the, the benefit of positive reinforcement work. However, corrections have their place 1000%. So where we all get annoyed, I think, with balanced trainers out there is in order for you to condition the dog to understand what the rules of the game are, that's where the fun stuff comes in. How are you going to correct a dog for something they don't know? Unless it's something super obvious, like lunging at someone. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. if the dog doesn't know how to sit down, you condition it first, teach the down, teach the sit, teach the recall. Then when the dog knows better, now you're assessing, are you going to do what I asked you to do that you know? Or are you not? At that point, your relationship building, that's when corrections come into play. Yeah, the foundation and, is everything. And you also can there's the value of compliance. You can raise the value of mm-hmm. compliance. Exactly. Right. Like without using pain. Dog, and, and this is what I always say is dog training is getting the dog to value what you want more than what it wants. Yeah. And then, then what it wants from an instinctual standpoint. Yep, Behavior yep. modification is learning to understand what the dog needs from you and respecting. Mm, interesting. I love that. I love that definition. Um, one thing I, I, that I have an issue with is also the villainization of stress. Like oh stress is, stress yeah. is not a bad thing. Stress is a necessary, <laughs> necessary component of growth. Right. Yeah. And there, there are, I mean, there are, uh, when you don't scaffold things properly, you sometimes you can put too much stress on a yeah. situation, but stress is important for adaptation, <laughs> Uh, for dogs to learn things, for people to learn things. Like there's no one who's successful that's never been stressed. There's no oh, yeah. dog that has never been trained without having to go through. So even in, in the, in the R plus community, it's like it's, dogs have to go through stress and cycle through a behavior well, to figure out what needs it, to happen. It's, I would go so far as to say it's inevitable because yeah, if you, if exactly. you don't, the, the difference, <laughs> I think the difference between strictly positive because we were talking our, our last episode was with Sarah Bruski and she's an amazing trainer. She does sport dog work and she does pure she's positive sport R dog plus work. all the way. And, and, and she's solid, but she actually, but she's realistic and she understands the value of tools. She does sports stuff. Every other person on the field does uh balance training, Oops. even like her, her helpers and stuff like that. Like she, she's, she gets it. Um, it was more just like a personal journey, which is cool. That's respectable. Right. And her dogs <laughs> sure. do well. Uh, my point being, and as she was really upfront about this too. And if you're listening, I, I would think, you know, she would agree. Um, you can like a balanced trainer, regardless of all the nonsense that other people say about balanced training, you have to stress the dog because any sort of change at all is going to be stressful by the very nature of what a mammal is. Mm-hmm. I agree. No. Like, like a kid going to preschool, no one's correcting them, but it's just, it's just new and nobody likes new things. So the difference is you, the whole purpose of stress and the whole purpose of scaffolding to give, you know, Brent's point, like a little extra kind of backup is the whole reason these things exist kind of like school is you're going to have to stress because that's, that's you evolving. However, how can we stress you just enough that it's beneficial to, to it's conducive to change, but it's not going to like knock you on your ass and be counterproductive. Right. Now, the importance of stress is going to teach the inability to cope with stress. Exactly. exactly. And, and that, that's what I was getting at was, or you can do the, you know, a lot of times the pure positive stuff is like, I, I stress the dog as little as I possibly can, but then the real world stress is the shit out of that dogs. They don't know what to do. So it's not like you can avoid stress without right. corrections. Right. right. And that's, and that's, and uh, yeah. And always we know the hardest part in training is the distraction work, which is the stressful stuff. Right. Right. It's the, oh, it's good. the patient stuff. It's the FOMO and with that dog suffer from it's all these different things. I love the term FOMO. <laughs> yeah. FOMO, the fear of missing out. Right. Uh, you're like, what'd you call me? Um, anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. The shit that I get called every day. You're a FOMO. Your, your fear of missing out or, um, anyways, I wanted to go back in. I think we could shoot the shit on dog training uh, all, day. In, yeah, all day, all day. Let's go in. Cause I know the people who follow you, they're jumping on this podcast. They want to hear your story and the people who don't, I think they're going to benefit from your story. Every yeah. guest that we have on, we want to know who you were before dog training. We want to know the path that got you here. So if this was a superhero origin story, Give us the deets. Tell us um, how you got to where you are now. Um, if this is more in like the a, in the in the long form, not the short form. This is more like a villain origin story. <laughs> uh, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Like, like it's like the Joker origin. Story. You're like the Deadpool. Uh, uh, Deadpool. So so yeah. that so that's where I was going next. Like people on TikTok have called me the Deadpool of dog training, right? Mm-hmm. And like that's I cool. Love, 
I love that. I, I, I love that so much. So <laughs> I was born into dog training, basically. My grandfather was a dog trainer. And, oh. and so I learned from a very young age on golden retrievers and Belgian Malinois. Cool. And then I got two extremes. <laughs> I know. hundred percent, right? but all working line though. All yeah, working. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then basically what ended up happening is that my family moved to the United States and I developed a really bad stutter. And I was socially rejected because I was speaking German and like, it was, it, it was just like, you, you know, a pointless minutia there, but I started working at a zoo and at the Alameda Park Zoo under Steve Deal, who's a wolf conservationist and coyote behavioral expert. Mm. And at a very young age, I was about, I was about 10 years old. And then I worked there for years and years and years and got my, and, and got my studying and for, mm. with, 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 with cane that's born in captivity. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I started applying dog training methods. I mean, I just made an accountability post on Facebook where I was like, mom, did this happen? Because people were like, he never worked with like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with wolves and coyotes. And I was like, okay, let's bring my mom into it. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> Love it. and like, mama black don't lie. I tell you yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so she validated and I taught those coyotes recall, like, mm. <laughs> like, like they came up to the fence. I learned about wolf behavior, all that shit. Then I got into rescue and I learned about pure positive dog training. And mm -hmm. at first I was like, this seems to be a bunch of crock of, Ubly gawk fantasia shit, but I saw some shit work. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the people was actually an apprentice to Karen Pryor, mm -hmm. who, who who taught me, you know, uh, pure positive applications. Nice. And that's why when people are like, when people go, "Oh, you used to be a pure positive trainer." Well, what are your certifications? I don't have any credentials in pure positive dog training. Mm -hmm. All I know is that the person who taught me studied directly under your God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. And so, and even she was like, "This won't work on every dog." like right well, know, yeah and while well, I well. Tried, like while i tried to stay as positive as possible i got into dog rescue rescued a bunch of dogs in, in, in my <laughs> time and i'm one of the trainers in this world who put their time in in the field i didn't go to dog training school i learned like a chef learns i started as a fucking dishwasher and worked mm -hmm. my way to an executive chef yep. and like am i against dog training school no but like mm -hmm. the way that i learned it gives you that real world experience of sleeping in kennels with dogs covered in shit and piss trying to figure them out. So you value your craft a lot more. Yep. Right. Like pulling a dog that's going to get put to sleep unless you fix it. And then that dog is, has latched onto your shin and you have no idea what to do because you're 18 years old and you're just like, I got this pit bull latched onto my shin and I don't yep. know what the fuck to do. I have to yeah, figure yeah, it yeah. out. It's invaluable experience. It is invaluable experience. Mm -hmm. And that's why the trainers that come out of my program who work for me, they, they spend six months to a year without ever even touching a leash, you know, mm -hmm. like, like they have to cultivate their knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so my journey led me to be homeless in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And that was after my band's van broke down in Austin. I went back home to Tucson. I grabbed, I grabbed a pair of jeans. I grabbed a shirt. I got into my 1999 Honda Accord where the window didn't roll up. And I drove <laughs> back to Austin, Texas, and I slept in the parking lot of Rose Crab Shack. You're from fucking Tucson? The Tucson, yeah. And, no way. Uh, Is your family still down here in Tucson? Yeah, yeah. They live over on Grant and Silverbow. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I just doxed my fucking family. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the next, oh, time you're, the next time you're in town, let me know. We'll hang out for sure. Oh, bro. Let's do it, man. I'm, uh, let's, let's do a seminar. My demand out there is crazy. Um, let's do it. Do it. For sure. Continue. Yeah. So, so like, um, I, I, I rode back out to Austin. And then from there, I just, um, I, I, I just fucking started betting people that I could leash train their dog. You're like, bet. And, bet. and, I, would, and I would bet them $100 <laughs> at, the, at the lake. And people were like, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah, it's just leash pressure. You know, it wasn't even prong relying. Mm -hmm. It was just collar right. relying and leash pressure were relying. Any, any trainer worth their weight and fucking verbals can mm -hmm. fucking like mm -hmm. train a dog to walk on leash with any buckles yes. and with any Our, leash. Yeah or with any collar and any leash. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the legend of the homeless dog trainer spread and I got an apartment mm. with my best friend and I started bartending, driving Uber, building my business and, you know, got into fitness mm -hmm. and alongside fitness, the business grew. Mm. And, you know, seven years later, we are a million dollar business and um, Excellent. We, we are all five star a Yelp review business. We are the go-tos in Austin, Texas. And I do seminars all over the country. I, people fly me all over the country i just got back from virginia where mm -hmm. we worked with three uh, pities and like it was awesome and you know it's really um it's been the most humbling experience of my life because i never thought that for a second that that somebody like me i mean who's just been a punk ass his, his whole life being a punk rock grew up in the diy culture and things like that that i 
that I could make it in an industry um, that require that requires people to believe that you are authentic and loving, and people actually get that from me that 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 I am authentic and loving because of my passion and because of my. But it, it comes across as angry sometimes, but it's not anger. It is it is just the passion and it's frustration because yeah. because what I want to get across to people is that you don't need to hire me. It's it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier than you fucking think it is. Yeah. And like. In just dog training, keep your dog on a leash, place train your dog, crate train your dog, don't give that dog freedom. For, like from, from the time the dog's a puppy, you'll never have a fucking problem. True. Yeah. It's like, like sta- stage by stage fundamentals. If you just yeah. did them, if you could just put in, you know, uh, 45 minutes a day, like cumulatively, not even at the same time, like your, just your lifestyle. Be- yeah. Just like just your lifestyle. Use the leash to communicate with your dog from day one, right? Yeah. Or like Larry Crone just made an incredible post and something that I've always advocated for is when the dog is in a puppy stage and it's and it's like needy and it's looking for you mm-hmm. and it's not gonna run away from you, keep that dog off leash in a safe mm-hmm. area with you and cultivate that off leash behavior from a mm-hmm. very young age. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. and then inside put the leash on. I know it seems counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. Inside should be calm, outside should be play, right? Like right. Right. That's the way it should be. Right. 100%. No, I, I love those. I love here's, those. Here's a question for you, buddy. So, yeah. as we go through your story, tell us a little bit about who your mentors are. Because, of course, from just from a dog training perspective, so your grandpa was a dog trainer. So, I'm sure to a large degree, he, he played a big role in like shaping you. But, mm-hmm. but just as a person, and, and we definitely want to get into your online presence and why you kind of took the route that you did with, you know, with how you come up online. Talk to us about any other mentors, even if they're not necessarily in the dog training world. Just who do you look up to? There's a gentleman by the name of Chad Williams here uh-huh. in Austin, Texas. He's a former uh, Special Forces Pararescue PJ um, from the Air Force. Um, I was going to say, he's a, I, I was Air Force too. Go ahead. So my dad was Air Force. He was he was helicopter maintenance and rescue. Oh, sweet. And so like yeah, he was with the 40, the 45th, the Jolly Green. Okay. okay. And um, so like he definitely believed in me. Uh, my mom and dad are huge mentors of mine. Um, but in dog training in particular, the trainer who believed in me, um, more than anybody, and you guys, and you guys should check him out, um, is Danny Wells from Unleashed Canine Services in the UK. Um, he is, he's, he's the top trainer there. He's so good at what he does. He does, he does bite work, protection work, but also does pet rehabilitation. And he's just, he's just a master. He's just a master at what he does. Not that any of us can ever be masters in this craft. I mean, it's it, like, it's always learning, but Danny's amazing. And Danny actually helped shape me. And he was like, he was like, bro, I want to fuck with you, but I can't fuck with you in dog training unless I see some before and afters. Mm. Right. So, so Danny challenged me from a very, very early stage in my professional career where, where, where he was like, I need to start seeing some before and afters. And from that day forward, I videoed everything, which is why I have so much content because I have content from the last six years of, of my journey in dog training, where you can, where you can literally tell where when I broke out of the, of the pure positive mindset, I was a little too heavy sometimes with dogs. Right. And then the you pendulum just, always swings. Yes. You know, the pendulum always swings. You can see the growth in my journey. And like, it's, it's, it's fascinating to myself to be able to go back and with a, with, with, with a critical eye, be like, I would not like that today. Mm-hmm. Today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, and, and I just love that I have the before and afters, but it also shows me that before and afters can come from very many approaches. Cause I've used mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of approaches um, right. from Larry Crone, from Tyler Mudo, who's a hobby of mine. Like I love Tyler. He's love dope. Tyler. He's like, dope. I just texted him this today. <laughs> I love that guy. Tyler's baby he, Buddha. And like, yeah, man, he, he answers all your questions. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, just, he's just one of the patron saints you know what i mean mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. like he's so good and he he's he, he's a homie that i'll always throw it back to like i know we got some mm-hmm. gatekeepers in mm-hmm. in the in in this industry right it's my goal to break the wheel on the gatekeepers because mm-hmm. fuck the gatekeepers right um, right right but tyler is one of those trainers because he stays so in his own lane and he does his own thing and he's so just like so zen that mm-hmm. whenever you get an approval from tyler mudo it means the fucking world because he True. doesn't think because he doesn't think the world of him and he of, of himself right. and um when, when i was coming out of my pure positive shell his videos on youtube mm-hmm. they they just blew my mind mm-hmm. like blew my mind and then here in austin i started to apprentice because i was very anti-e-collar until right. like five years ago truly, mm. truly. 
right. I was using prongs and slips and I thought you never would need to use an e-collar. And then here in Austin, Texas, I apprenticed under somebody who use who uses e-collars. And the reason why I don't name names is because of my controversial presence. I don't want to get anybody like in trouble for being associated with me because there are a lot of big names, big names who you guys have already mentioned mm-hmm. that can't that have told me we love you, but you bring too much <laughs> Too much mm. bullshit to the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, yeah. and it has nothing to do with the balance side. It has to do with the fact that I troll right. the pure positive side. Mm-hmm. And like, they don't want to get doxxed. I just got doxxed on TikTok. Some dude exposed my address. Mm. You know, like, mm. and like, it, it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, right. we can you not be witty and show me results with dog training? No, you yeah. can't because you deflected into a bully. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 